Hey, City Center Baptist Church family, it's Pastor Brad coming to you from DDQ headquarters. Digging deeper question number one this week asks, why is corporate worship vital for the Christian community? Worship is central to the Christian's life. Whenever we get a glimpse into the activities of heaven, the worship of our great God is the prime priority. Worship is declaring the worthiness of the one worshiped. God alone is great. He alone is our sovereign ruler. He alone is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He alone possesses life and offers eternal life. He alone is our savior, redeemer, forgiver, and our hope of resurrection. No one else is worthy of our love, devotion, faith, commitment, and allegiance. Worship will be our primary focus for all of eternity, so it's best to practice now for our eternal priority. An individual believer is certainly able to worship God on her own. We don't need others to praise our Lord. However, that does not mean that corporate worship isn't necessary. There are many instances in the scriptures when the people of God specifically gather in their faith communities to praise, pray, and give thanks to their Heavenly Father. It is recorded throughout the Bible that God's people prioritize knitting their hearts together as one to worship God. For example, in Deuteronomy 16, 6 to 7, 16 to 17, the nation of Israel that had just been redeemed out of Egyptian slavery was commanded by the Lord through Moses to meet for corporate worship three times a year during the key feasts of unleavened bread, weeks, and booze. In this manner, they would not neglect or forsake the reminder that God had delivered them and that they owed everything to him. These were tangible ways for the people to reflect on God's good blessings and acknowledge his provision for them. In Micah 4, 1-5, the prophet foresaw a time when many peoples and nations would make the pilgrimage to Jerusalem, to the temple of God, to worship and be instructed in his word. Our hope is in a day to come when all weapons of war will be transformed into implements of productivity and prosperity, and God will reign over all and there will be universal peace. Finally, in Hebrews 10, 24 to 25, the beleaguered people of God who were suffering for their faith in the Lord Jesus were admonished to keep meeting together. They were to encourage one another through life's hardships, holding on to the hope that Jesus, their savior, would return. On that day, we will worship him and all we have had to endure will have been worth it. No wonder David wrote, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord in Psalm 122, verse 1. This has been Pastor Brad coming to you from DDQ headquarters.